Hey friends, it's really good to be with you again today. And today's been a busy day. If any of you have watched my Facebook page, you'll see that I mentioned that it's an anniversary date, and it is. And what you don't know is it's really two anniversary dates. And one of the anniversary dates is that my sister disappeared this day in 1982. But the second anniversary date you might not know is that in 1971, um, I went to a Bible study and I accepted Jesus as my savior and became um, his child. And little did I know how God would love me and take care of me and nurture me because I was his. And so they're really connected because to me, it's an anniversary of a death and of a new life. So with that in mind, I want to tell you the story of, um, of death. Um, I remember getting a, uh, a letter and I just want to tell you this poem. Divorce, the letter read. Violence, it went on. A long distance call made. I can't talk now, he's harassing me again. Hours later, a phone rings and two sisters talk. One tells of a hurting heart and 10 years of pain. The other sobs in silence. Calling the police was easy. I wish I would have done it sooner. Days later, another call. She's gone. No one knows where. She never showed up at work. Her husband says she just walked out. Disbelief fills a sister's heart. Too many questions invade her mind. Why would she leave her kids? Why didn't she take her car? Why not wait for the money that would be hers the next day? Some questions in life get answered and some take time. It has been 40 years since two sisters talked and one still hurts. And as I was thinking about sharing that poem and how many years it's been, and I thought about the line, it's been 40 years since two sisters talked and one still hurts. There's only one of us hurting. My sister is in the presence of God. She is not hurting. She is not suffering. No, she is in the presence of God Almighty. Um, I remember the day that I came to know Jesus Christ. And I have to tell you that when I did accept what he did for me, I wanted to tell my brother about it and my sister. And when I told my brother Gus, he said, I believe that when I was in Awana Clubs. And then I tried telling Peggy about it, and Peggy said, I, I already accepted him when I was in Awana Clubs. I was late. I was late compared to them, but it was the timing for me. It was the right time for me. And still, as I look back and I think of my brother Gus being gone and my sister Peggy being gone and even my brother Steve being gone. With Steve, I told him about Jesus and I know that he believes. And Steve is in heaven now and Gus is in heaven now and Peggy is. And so one day I will join them and then we'll catch up <laughs> and it will be great. But I do want to introduce you to Peggy. She was beautiful and she was, she was my sister. She was a sister. We used to fight. She used to scratch me and pinch. That's the truth. But I loved her and she loved me. She loved me so much that when I turned 16, she thought it was important for me to have a party. So she threw me a party and that, just a few people came, but she cleaned the house and she just wanted everything to be perfect for my party. That was my sister. And so I just want to share why I wrote this book. 
This is called Broken, a story of abuse, survival, and hope. And I felt God leading me to write this book. I felt like he was nudging me and he wanted me to tell my story, which was a story of abuse from my dad. And my dad abused us physically. He got into rages and then he would hit us. And it was important for me to tell Peggy's story because I wanted to be a voice for her. And because honestly, I knew that if the, if the roles were reversed and I had been missing, she would have done anything, anything to find out more about it because she was my sister. I wrote Broken because I hope nobody has to go through what we went through. That's why I wrote it. And I'm really trying to be her voice in this. My sister was very intelligent. She was very creative. She once made a five foot Santa Claus out of paper mache, and I am not kidding. And she painted Santa Claus. I remember her doing it, painting the, the outfit that Santa wears. I don't know what you call that outfit, but the Santa Claus outfit. And why did she do that? It wasn't just the art project. Peggy was afraid that Steve was stop, stopping to believe in Santa Claus because our mom had died and Steve was seven and she was afraid he was going to stop believing. So Peggy made this Santa Claus and carried it home and paper mache, for those of you that don't know, isn't very heavy, but it was awkward for her. But she, she had pride in what she had made and she brought it home and then she propped it against a window or something so that it looked like Santa was looking out or in and she took a picture of it to show Steve. I remember that and can you believe it? The Lord let me find that picture. I'm not holding it up now, but I remember finding that little swinger photograph that was taken and remembering all over again that that was her heart for Steve for that Christmas. She wanted him to believe. Um, I thank God that he made us promises that he keeps. And one of the promises that he makes us is that he will never leave us nor forsake us. So I want you to know that one day when I was really struggling, I'm sure it was the enemy tormenting me because he is the great tormentor. And I was on my way back from a homicide group that I attended in Kane County Fairgrounds. No, Kane County Courthouse. And I was coming home and I remember just feeling all these terrible thoughts of what it must have been like when she died, because like I said, we didn't have the answers to our questions. And so I remember wanting to scream and I was driving, so that's not a good thing when you're driving. So I pulled off to the side of the road and I did scream. I just screamed and screamed and got a lot of that hurt out. I guess it's scream therapy. And after I did that, actually right after I stopped the screaming, I felt God say to me, Anne, I was with her. There are no better words that God could have told me than those words. The God of the universe knew that one of my fears was how she must have felt in those last moments. And God assured me that he was with her. And that has made all the difference in the world. Because it says in scripture that God can give us a peace that passes understanding. It just doesn't make any sense, but we have this peace. Has it happened in your life at all where you'll be going through a difficult time and nothing's really changed? but you're doing better. That's God's peace. That is 
our Heavenly Father reaching down and giving you consolation, giving you what you need, letting you know you're not alone, you're going to be okay. If you ever hear me say anything contrary to that, let me know right away because then I'm done. I just want people to know that God loves you, that you are important. I don't care if there's things that you've done that you wish you didn't. I don't care if you're not where you think you should be today. Our Heavenly Father loves you so much that He allowed His Son to be sacrificed for your sin. He loves you so much that it isn't enough that He sees you and watches you now. He wants you with Him. Greater love has no man than this, that a man lay down his life for a friend. God loves you that much. Um, I also want you to know that I had other losses in my life, but with each loss, God did exactly what he said. He was close to the brokenhearted. I remember one time getting an opportunity to speak and share about God's love and how kind God was. And I remember a woman speaking to me later, and she said these words to me. And I don't remember the exact words, but something like, you know, I look at you, and you've lost a lot of people in your life, but you're still up there saying how God is good. And it makes me feel like I don't have a right to think anything other than that. And I thought, wow, God is using the very thing that was difficult in my life, my losses, and he's using it. He's using it so that I could show people how good God is. Because really, if everything worked out for me great, and I stood up and I said, oh, God is good. God is good. People could go, yeah, what problems does she have? Well, let me tell you something. I do have a lot of problems, and I have gone through hard times. But our God is a kind, tender, compassionate God. I remember being in Germany when my husband was in the military, and we were attending a conference at the PWOC, Protestant Women of the Chapel. And there was a speaker there, I believe that's where it was, and all of a sudden, the speaker said that God was good. And she shared the story about how her son took this baseball bat and he was swinging it around and he swung it up and he hit this fluorescent light and there was a deafening sound as glass just shattered all over the place. And when it settled, I guess there's something that happens when fluorescent lights break. When it settled down, all around him was glass, but right where the, her son was, there was no glass. He was protected. And so her words were, God is good. And I looked over at my friend Jeannie, who had just lost a precious little baby. And her baby Aaron had gone through eight major surgeries and then died of crib death. And it was just heartbreaking. But they trusted God, even through this difficult time, they trusted God. Anyway, when that speaker said that God is good, he spared my son, I looked at Jeannie and she said, God is good. I wonder what she would have said if he hadn't spared her son. Friends, that's so deep. God is wonderful and awesome and loving and kind and tender-hearted, and I could go on and on. I really could. It's apart from what he does. God's character is goodness. 
God can be nothing but good. Does some of the things that God chooses feel good? Do they all feel good? No. But God's ways are so much higher than our ways, and his thoughts are so much higher than our thoughts. As far as the east is from the west, it says in Isaiah, God is good no matter what he chooses. We have a good, wonderful, loving God. That's what I want you to know. I'd like to share a poem, and the title of the poem is called, He Heard My Tears Fall. I looked all around me and heard not a sound, except for the echoes of pain. I felt my heart breaking and aching once more as my losses all surfaced again. And then, in the silence, I saw him draw near, this one who would come and would gather each tear. I sighed in my soul, for somehow I knew he would take time to come and would comfort me too. But I was surprised, for I never did call. He knew of my pain when he heard my tears fall. And another poem I want to share with you is, I have these holes. And many of you that are out there right now, you have suffered losses. I pray that this poem ministers to your heart. It was 1994 at two o'clock in the morning and God gave me these words. Last night, my sadness woke me up and I sobbed uncontrollably. The world was sleeping, so I turned to the Lord for conversation. I feel like I'm getting my life together, Lord, except for these holes. The losses I have had have left these holes in me, and now my life keeps seeping out the holes. I've tried filling the holes with all kinds of things, busyness, food, sympathy from others, but Nothing works. And the grief from memories past enveloped me again, and I sat rocking myself, holding myself, trying to give comfort to my pain, wanting to gain understanding. This pain sure hurts, Lord. And then, as early morning came, I heard him softly call my name. With nail-scarred hands outstretched to me, he said so very tenderly, I have holes too. And then I knew he understood as no one could. Oh, friends, that's the kind of Heavenly Father we have, that he would love us so much he would allow his Son to be sacrificed for us for me and for you. And what does he ask? He asks one thing, that you would accept his gift. And it is a gift, a gift with no strings attached. It isn't you get the gift if you do this, this, and this. No, it says, for by grace are you saved through faith and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. God really doesn't care what church you go to, or even if you are somebody that regularly goes to church. God is interested, friends, in one thing. About 2,000 years ago, he sent his son to earth, and Jesus was spit upon. They ripped out his beard. They slapped him. They made fun of him. They put a crown of thorns on his head like that. All of these things were done to him, and they nailed him to a cross. The guards came up to him and thrust a spear in his side, and out came blood, perfect blood. The only thing 
that satisfies the heart of God. And why did he do it? Because he loves us. Greater, greater love has no man than this, than a man would lay down his life for a friend. I love sharing my poetry. I love sharing the things that God has done in my life. But I really love sharing about my Lord. And when I visited that basement on Laverne Avenue in Chicago, and I listened to Lois Peterson share what Jesus Christ did on that cross? At first, I'll be honest, I thought, well, maybe she needs a Savior, but I'm doing just fine. But the second night, when I went over, I saw it was for me. And even though rain was drizzling down the windows of my friend's little BW, I saw it. It was clear. I knew I was going to heaven. Friends, God doesn't care about a lot of things that we think he cares about. He wants to know that when he sent his son about 2,000 years ago, what did you do with Jesus? Because it says in 1 John, he that has the son has life. And he that has not the Son of God has not life. What did you do with Jesus? And if you don't know for sure that you're going to heaven, I want you to ask me for a copy of uh, an ebook copy of um, Real Love. I'll send it to you. And it has the story, the very simple story of what we need to do to know, not hope, not think, but know that we're going to heaven. So today was a hard day until I focused on the second anniversary, which actually came first. And that's the day that I accepted Jesus as my savior. I'm gonna see my sister again and if you have loved ones that have gone on before and they know the Lord, you're going to see them again. And I so want to share with all of you this poem that I have about if one day soon I disappear. And I promise I will share that poem in one of the coming episodes of our talks together. But for now, I just want to praise God. I praise God that I had a sister. And yes, I wish she lived longer so that we could just continue the relationship we had. We did not have very much time together. But I praise God for her. And I praise God that I had a granddaughter. And she wasn't even supposed to live till her birth. But God graciously let her live for 14 months. And I praise God for that. And I praise God that even though I lost two brothers and my mother and my father, and as I said, Peggy, and the baby was Livy, and I have two little cherubs in heaven, the two that I lost, the miscarriages, but I praise God because God is good and kind and loving. That's the kind of God I know. That's the kind of God you need to know. I would really like to pray for you. May I do that? Oh, Father God, I pray for anyone who can hear my voice right now or anyone who will watch the videos or listen to them later. God, you know the hearts of men. You made those hearts. And God, you care 
when we hurt. Jesus knew he was going to raise Lazarus. He knew what he was going to do. But Jesus wept. Father, I love you so much. And I thank you for everything that you've given me. And Lord, this moment, I thank you for what you haven't given me. Because I am determined to trust you, God. I know that every choice you make for me is out of love. And I pray for my friends that many of them will choose to follow you. And I don't pray this because of who I am, but because of whose I am. For I pray this in your son's precious and awesome name, in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey friends, I want you to do me a favor. You might have seen on my site that I wrote the book Broken. I've already told you about it. But there are people out there that may benefit from reading it. So would you share either a meme that I've got out there with the, with the uh, link of the book, or there's a couple videos that my daughter Jessica has made. I don't care what you share, but would you share something so that we can at least reach out to those that might need some encouragement. Would you do that for me? And if you have read Broken, could you leave a review? If, even if you didn't like it, just, I, just an honest review. Because the more reviews you get, I guess you go on a different level and more, more eyes will be on the book. I am so glad that God helped my heart today. I want to lift you guys up. I want my words to be words that make hard things in life a little softer. That's my hope and prayer. I hope you subscribe to my YouTube channel. And if you think anybody would benefit from any of the episodes that I've shared, please share it. Thanks so much for being there so that I could be here talking to you and not just to the, <laughs> to the little camera. And please pray for me that I would hear God's voice clearly so that I could follow what he wants me to do. I hope you have a great rest of the day. I know I'm going to, because I'm his, and he is mine. See you next time.